Hello and welcome to the latest video. This video is going to be about Hewlett Packard 3582A. This is an audio frequency spectrum analyzer. I started the video about a month ago. During the video uh, you'll see that uh, I ended up going off on a tangent when I found some three pin capacitors and uh, wrongly thought that they were dual axial capacitors rather than radial capacitors with an anchor. Because of that, a lot of the footage I had to get rid of and uh, I've redone big chunks. I was going to abandon the video and just move on to using it, but having spoken to a few people, they said they'd like to see it. So with that in mind, I'll let you get on and watch the video. I won this uh, recently in an auction after doing a 250 mile round trip to collect it. It turned out that the item was faulty and uh, the only thing uh, that was working was that there was a, a green dot on the screen. Um, the item was sold as uh, untested but with a 30 day uh, money back uh, guarantee. So uh, it wasn't the end of the world uh, I was going to get my money back. Uh, but um, the people selling it basically said that uh, as it's not working it's no use to them and uh, they were going to uh, dispose of it. So they gave me the item for free. So basically uh, I've been on a 250 mile round trip for a dead audio spectrum analyzer which uh, gives me the chance to uh, spend a little money and actually uh, repair it. It's a bit out of my comfort zone but there are certain things which you can check. Okay so after taking the uh, plastic lid off the top inside there's a metal shield uh, which is held in by numerous screws which I've removed and then uh, this gives way to uh, a multitude of boards. Um, based on the issue which is that there's just a green dot in the middle of the screen first thing we need to look at is the power supply. This particular device was built in about 1982 which means that the capacitors in the power supply are all about 40 years old. When switched on, these LEDs here light up to show that there's power on the rails. They do, uh, do show, but then I'm getting a further LED showing that there's a fault. Each of these boards has a, a pair of LEDs, red and green. I'm not going to turn it on again because uh, I don't want to cause any further problems but that's basically uh, where uh, we get to. This is future me now. When I originally recorded the video I believed that these were dual axial caps. I later found out uh, after looking more closely at the PCB that the third pin is actually an anchor pin and uh, modern caps don't require the anchor pin because they're much smaller. Here we can see the seven DC boards from the uh, Spectrum Analyzer. There's set four different designer boards with the bottom four being identical but providing power to different rails. The top three boards, the first one is the linear supply board and provides a nominal 15 volts DC for the other DC boards. The central uh, board at the top is the power supply control board and the third board is the main plus 5 volts DC power board. In relation to these seven power boards, I've pulled most of the capacitors off uh, at one end and I've tested them. Although I'm mainly talking about electrolytic capacitors, there are some tantalums as uh, I'm pointing out now. These are well within spec and uh, I've been advised that uh, they won't need replacing. So it's uh, an order for new capacitors and then uh, a short wait uh, whilst uh, they arrive. 
Okay, so we're looking at this now uh, a week later, and I uh, have a number of uh, capacitors that have now arrived from DigiKey. The uh, capacitors arrived for the uh, first board uh, and for the second board. I have actually got the capacitors for the uh, other boards because I thought that they were dual axial capacitors in the first place. I've ordered uh, more than twice as many as I actually need, but uh, each individual uh, cap in these two bags uh, will go into the correct location on each uh, board. Okay, so first board, I uh, marked the board uh, with a negative and a positive, so I know which direction uh, they go um, when I took them out originally. Um, so I'm now just going to uh, fit the capacitors in place. Uh, modern capacitors uh, are uh, now much smaller than uh, than they used to be. So these capacitors uh, will look uh, rather out of place, uh, despite being uh, the same value. Um, the larger capacitor is a uh, Kemet because um, I couldn't get a Sprague in the right uh, value. Um, the one I've fitted is an 1800 rather than a 1700 uh, at 40 volts rather than 30 volts. It's within specification, um, so that's why I've uh, had to go with that one. Uh, the Sprague is um, a 300 by 50. Um, this was a 300 by 40, the old Sprague. These are atoms, which are uh, a newer uh, range of capacitors made by Sprague. Uh, and again, I'm fitting those in place. The way you can tell the positive and negative ends, uh, if it, they're not marked, they are on the uh, atoms, they're marked. Um, but uh, on the Kemet, for instance, there's this dip here and the fact that it's um, insulated from the shell on that end means that makes that the positive the negative uh, you can see is going to the case so uh, they're now um, mechanically attached so i'm just going to turn them over and uh, solder them um, and then i'll move on to the uh, second board Okay, and uh, I'll then snap. I'll then uh, cut the leads off and move on to the next board. I've removed the capacitors off uh, this board um, off shot. Uh, my desoldering station uh, is on the second bench, and uh, I can see I've now got the um, all the holes clear. Um, it's always worth taking a photograph beforehand um, before you do any repairs where you're removing multiple components. Um, I have done that, uh, but uh, for this particular case, um, the smaller caps obviously only fit in one place each. The larger cap, um, I made a note of where the positive was, which is down towards the edge connector. Um, and all the other capacitors, their positives are towards the positive I've put here. Um, so I'm now in a position to uh, replace them. The uh, smaller caps, uh, I've actually got exactly the same um, Sprague 5050s, uh, which will uh, fit into place. And uh, they're an exact replacement for the uh, previous ones. Um, the larger cap uh, the larger capacitors um, they again uh, fit although the ones I've got are actually slightly larger uh, yeah so these are the uh, new ones uh, same value 350. Uh, by there they are 350 16 volt 350 16 volt um, but yes they're slightly larger 
However, it looks like the circuit board itself was designed uh, with uh, either in mind because uh, it's a perfect fit for the uh, larger capacitors, uh, again, in the uh, same locations. So uh, they can also go in and I'll just uh, solder them in place. The uh, largest capacitor um, is uh, slightly fatter, but that won't matter. Um, and it's half the length again uh, so I'll do that now and uh, we'll then move on okay so as you can see the uh, power supply repair was uh, all that it needed and um, we now have a working display um, as you can see there's text on the display so the processor board and all the other boards are working as well uh, I have tested it uh, and uh, it gives me uh, the expected signal, um, the storage uh, buttons work and uh, everything is uh, great. There were three other things which uh, I did have an issue with. Uh, one of them was that the display had patches where it was darker than other areas. Uh, I thought that the uh, tube was going but uh, it ended up being a clear a clear perspex sheet uh, to protect the glass front and dirt had got behind it which was very very fine over the years uh, and all I had to do was release the surround at the top pull the uh, perspex out give it a cleaning warm soapy water and that fixed it the second issue was that uh, the binding posts had been replaced by the previous owner. But instead of replacing all four, or replacing the two positive ones with ones that matched the two ground ones, they just stuck two random posts on. The issue there was that there were different heights, which means that the adapters that you can buy um, you couldn't use them so I took the front off and I fitted two pairs of speaker posts because the frequency that this works up to is only 25 uh, kilohertz it doesn't need to be specialized uh, binding posts so these are standard speaker posts albeit gold ones of a decent quality when I fitted them, I fitted one of the uh, dual plugs into them to make sure that when everything was tightened up, they were absolutely uh, correct. So everything is now right, apart from on top of the span, the frequency span control, it's missing a cap. Uh, it's the same as the two caps on channel A and channel B, and it says Cal on it, and basically, um, it allows you to um, adjust that control uh, finely. Um, so that's what I'm missing. Uh, and as it stands, that's literally the only thing um, between this being uh, 100% um, and as it is now, uh, but it is fully working. I'm not going to go and I'm not going to demonstrate it right now. Um, I'm going to end the video uh, with uh, this is a bit of a teaser. Uh, over the weekend, I'm going to be doing uh, a new video where I'm going to be uh, demonstrating the difference between an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer, um, and also chucking a multimeter into the mix as well uh, and showing why you use one thing for measuring or looking at uh, one signal and another for something else. So that's going to be coming up in the next video um, and I'm hoping to do that this weekend. Thanks for watching and uh, please remember to uh, like and subscribe.